What's up guys, XM360 here, and in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing another laser from Sanwu Lasers. This one is going to be their Guardian series, and it's going to be the 1W 445 nanometer blue model. Now, just like all the other lasers on their site, there's a lot of different variations that you can do. You can get it in a bunch of different styles, powers, and colors. I have the blue 445 1W here in the smooth style, so that's $150. But you can see right below that main picture in the top left hand corner there is one that has kind of grooves on it and a different style to it you can get that for an additional ten dollars or you can also for an additional ten dollars go with a copper red model so there's a lot of different styles and variations for the guardian so they advertise that this laser has a 60 second duty cycle uh, the weight is 155 grams and it takes one 18350 lithium ion battery. So here's the laser itself and you're going to see two of them because I also have a green 520 nanometer that I'm going to be reviewing in an upcoming video. The material used is a either stainless steel host or a nickel copper alloy. And these lasers with some of the diodes at least can be purchased in a multi-operations mode or a single operations mode. The one I have right here is just single operation, click on, click off, one high power mode. And all of their lasers come with a one year warranty. So now that I got all that technical specification stuff out of the way, I want to take a look at the actual laser. And what I love most about these Sanwu lasers is just their, their simplicity to them. Uh, there's not a lot of unnecessary buttons or a lot of unnecessary features or flash or show it's just a simple straight up host and diode and I like that a lot it's at least from my prior experience they've been very very well built hosts and this one doesn't seem any different so far um, really good heavy feel to it and one of the biggest thing that stands out about this Guardian is that it's the shortest laser I think I've ever had and to be completely honest, this might be the same exact height as the pocket lasers I have from Sanwu, but it's just because it's wider that it seems a lot shorter and stubbier and smaller. Um, to get to the battery compartment, you just unscrew the little tail cap where the button is on the very bottom. You insert one 18350 battery with the positive end facing the diode and the negative end facing the tail or button of the laser. And it's very important that you get the right batteries. This one takes 18350 flat tops. If you don't get the flat tops, it probably won't fit properly. And I just wanted to quickly show you guys the ones that I got from Sanwu because I did opt to get batteries with my order. And these are 3.7 volt 900 milliamp batteries. The first thing I wanted to show you guys on this laser is its adjustable focus feature. That's located towards the top of the laser. You just unscrew it to make the focus go in and out to make that dot more fine at a particular point if you wanted to, say, do some burning. And what's kind of interesting is with this host, you might not even notice that there's that little spot to unscrew when you first get the laser because the host is so well put together. It just looks like one solid piece of stainless steel and it's just barely noticeable that there's a little line where you're able to unscrew it. So I think that really speaks to the construction of this, that everything's so perfect you can, when you have this screwed together nice and tight, you really can't see that little line um, where you are supposed to unscrew it. Uh, just to show you guys this in some different lighting levels, this is an indoor setting right here. The beam is visible looking down the axis of the laser and a little bit from the sides too. Um, make sure whenever you're using this thing indoors that you have it focused out enough that it's not going to burn anything in your home. And you also have to wear the proper laser glasses. Those are not optional. Those are required. It's really going to save you the trouble if you accidentally hit your eye and cause permanent eye damage. So just wear the glasses. I'll put some links in the descriptions to some good pairs. This is what it looks like outdoors. No beam visibility, but you can see that dot very well even from over 100 feet away on that rock wall down there. Uh, the divergence is medium. It's not bad in my opinion, but it's not the best either. I think it's fair for that amount of distance that the laser is traveling. And Sanwu Lasers also sells different lenses you can get. So what I have here is the standard three element lens, but they also have a G2 and a G7 lens. And I'm going to show you guys right here. This is the info on them. You can use these to improve your power or improve your divergence. Moving on to the final lighting level, which is the nighttime. This one, the beam is extremely bright from the side, looking down the axis, the dots extremely bright. And I say it in almost all of my blue laser videos, but you have to be very, very careful when using a laser this bright at night. 
don't aim it at any person, um, any animal, any vehicle, any plane, and try to keep it on your property. Your neighbors will not appreciate you pointing it in their in their yards and stuff, and you might get yourself in some trouble. So just play it safe when using something like this because it's very, very bright and very dangerous. I'm going to move on to the LPM test now, and I'm going to speed them up. I'm going to show you guys three different results here. For the average results, I got about between 880 and 930 milliwatts in that 50 milliwatt range with the average sitting at about 910, 915 milliwatts. That was the average power reading I got from most of my readings. And I have these three right here, but I've done more. These are just the only three that I've recorded. And I'll talk more about that power reading and the spec um, in the reviewing aspect of this in just a minute or two. I just wanted to quickly show you guys the burn test here. I'm going to burn a couple of things and I have my laser mounted on a little tripod. Starting off with some matches, I'm going to use the smoke here to show you guys where my focal point is. It's sitting about a foot away from the tip of my laser and it just lights up these matches within a second. The second it makes contact with them, it lights them. I'm going to move on to a little piece of paper here. I unfortunately was not able to get it to catch on fire completely, but it burned lots of lots of holes in this thing and you can see all the smoke coming off of it. Next up is some black electric tape and as you can imagine it just cuts through this stuff like butter. Um, I did have to go back and forth a little bit to get some of the strands I missed, but it cuts through that no problems. And the next thing is a balloon, I'm just going to drop it over the focal point. Pops it immediately. And the final thing I wanted to show you guys is a small section of wood. I was able to do a lot of engraving on the wood, make dark lines on it. And although it doesn't light it on fire, it burns it in real time. You're burning black lines onto it. You could write your name or something like that. It's very quick at burning these dark lines onto the wood and you can see all the smoke coming off it as well. And I'm now going to kind of use this to transition into the reviewing aspect of this. And the first thing I'm going to talk about is the power rating. This thing was rated at 1 watt and it came in at about 915, 920 milliwatts. I think that was very fair. I think that was very, um, it was, in my opinion, it was close enough to the power rating where I was satisfied with it. Uh, the, the LPM that I used to measure it was a Laser B A LPM. And yeah, I was very satisfied with the power rating. It wasn't too under spec where I'd call it into question. And part of that could be to uh, the lens that I have, the three element lens. Maybe if I went up to the G7 lens, which has better power efficiency, I could hit that one watt mark. So I was definitely satisfied with the power output. And if anybody's wondering, these beam shots are in a foggy room. I had this room all fogged up for another laser video I'm shooting right now, so I figured I'd get some beam shots of this laser while the room had all the fog in it. And the beam on this one was very nice in terms of alignment. I couldn't find any crookedness to it. Uh, the dot was very fine, um, rectangular because it is a diode laser, and it is obviously a little bigger than a DPSS laser, but the dot was very fine in my opinion. Uh, I love the host. I always love these Sanwu hosts. It has threads at the very top for attachments. Uh, you could attach one of the beam expanders or some of the other attachments they sell on their website, like the little saber attachment. And then at the very bottom of the host, there's also a little two little holes near the button, which I'd assume are for attaching a lanyard. And the host in general is very, very nice, well constructed, no imperfections on it. Um, really a masterpiece of a host in my opinion this thing looks amazing and overall I love this laser I really have nothing bad to say about it everything was great good solid construction and another great Sanwu laser so I'm gonna put some links in the description to where you can buy this and to those laser safety glasses if you guys found this review helpful in any way at all hit that like button down below and if you're new to my channel hit that subscribe button for lots of awesome laser reviews just like this and as always guys, thank you for watching from XM360.